Hey guys, the Taotaku here. Long time no see. It's been around like 6 months since what? the last upload. Yeah, Reason why I didn't upload as much as I used to is because I feel burnout. Burnout from recording say content. Life without tech content is a pain, especially when I'm financially broke. But since I decided to use my money to spare, I YOLO'd it and buy stuff from Shopee. Well, stuff happens. Since I have i5-3570, 4GB stick of RAM and 500GB hard drive that I bought from the college friend about 2 years ago and some hardware I have laying around. So I ordered a motherboard, CPU cooler and a case and that's about it. The cooler arrived on May 22nd, case arrived on May 29th, both using COD, no, not Call of Duty, cash on delivery. And motherboard arrived on May 31st. Yes, I bought it on May 15th, shipped out next day, and the boat arrived from China to Malaysia in just 3 days. And then on May 20th, something ridiculous happened. The logistics they chose hold my parcel for 11 days, stuck in the delivery hub, not moving, which is ridiculous. I waited for so long for that motherboard and it's really ridiculous that this took 11 days in the delivery hub just to get here to my doorstep. So that's all I have to say. Best Express is terrible. Don't use this horrible logistics. Even people complain about it. For more context about why Best Express is horrible, I did a tweet on my main Twitter account. So yeah, link in the description. Anyway, with all parts arrived, let's get to the video. Okay, so let's build a PC. So I feel like I decided to build a PC because I have this chip sitting in the storage after buying a chip, RAM, and a 500 gig drive from a friend of mine in the college about a year or so ago. It's been sitting here doing nothing for ages, so why not build one? Let's start off with the CPU. This right, friends, is the Intel Core i5-3570 at 3.4 gigahertz. It's quad core without hyper threading, if I remember correctly. That's the chip. Moving on to the RAM, we have 4 gigs of DDR3 RAM, and this is the HP part here. I might upgrade to 8 gigs at some point, but not today. And for the cooler is the Cooler Master i70C. And yes, it does have a blue LED on the i70C, which is pretty cool. And it has copper core as well, like stock Intel cooler does. That's about the cooler, RAM, and the CPU. And now let's move on to the board. This is the MSI B75M-E33 and I already did open it open it up and not tested it yet so I might test it out on video so yeah and now for the storage I have one of the two storage cho options here we have a 500 gigabyte Toshiba drive this is also pulled out from the HP Preview, and yes, the, the drive, the RAM, and the CPU are pulled out from the HP Preview by a friend of mine, so <laughs> yeah. And now we have 160GB hard drive. So yes, I did bring like a little bit, so <laughs> I was originally going to use 160GB hard drive for boot drive, but I was like, you know what? Time to yoink the SSD out of the A43 SD laptop and call it a day. Yeah, it does contain some risky stuff, so I'm probably gonna deband that later on. And the SSD here is the Kingston V300 120GB SSD. I got it for free, which is definitely pull out from a custom built PC if I remember correctly. So yeah. Anyway, as for the case, I have the AVF MX4000. I was originally going to go with the MX1000 because of the sick, simple front. However, the seller told me that it's out of stock, so had to exchange with the MX4000, and I literally overpay for this thing. Oh no. <laughs> Anyway, this is going to be a pseudo unboxing because I already unboxed it earlier and did a Pentium build out of this case. It's kind of a pain in the ass to build, but still, it's actually such an experience for me. And yes, I had to mention the power supply, so I had to use the ESAC 450W power supply which is pulled out from the uh, LG775 PC that no longer works. And it doesn't even have a PCIe 8-pin or 6-pin connector, so yeah, it only has one SATA power and a couple of Molex, which I hate. I hate it so much. <laughs> yeah, not gonna lie, it looks very sketchy as hell despite being a 2008 power supply. I'm probably gonna replace the power supply soon enough, so yeah. Anyway. 
let's build this thing. Alright, so here's the board itself. It doesn't look that clean, but but what do you expect? This is a used motherboard. The condition is pretty dusty, but otherwise in not too rusty condition, but I hope it works, so yeah. So now I'm gonna go ahead and install the CPU right about now. There's the i5. What the end doing here? There's a chip from the HP Prebuild. Let's install the CPU. So all I have to do is to pull this thing here. Okay. Now all I have to do is to I'm gonna make sure that none of the CPU pins are bent. Twelve seconds later. All right. It should be good. So let's drop the CPU in. All right. CPU's in. Now I'm gonna oh, latch it back in. And now the CPU has been installed. And now I'm gonna figure out how the hell can I install this cooler here. One minute thirty seven seconds later. Alrighty, CPU, RAM and heatsink installed. Now let's put it to the case. Okay, so I did a big brain method of mounting a an SSD onto a bracket and then mount the bracket onto the case using only two screws. Not ideal but it will work just fine. I did just have to add two washers because it's gonna have not enough clearance with the uh, with the thread along with the SSD mount because you know what? The, it, the tolerances is low on when it shifted to the this side rather than the other side or or mounted it to the center. I guess the mounting method kind of works now. Okay, so I discovered a little bit of problem with this motherboard and the case. So uh, <laughs> the the front panel audio is on shifted on to the back, and the problem is the front panel audio cable is too short and it cannot reach the the connector that is shifted way to the back and yeah you know what I think I'm just gonna leave it as it is because there's nothing I can do about it okay so I did plug in the cables off camera and one of the least favorite part that I did here is the front panel connector because I had to look at the manual figure out where the front panel connector would go and yes this is what everyone hates to do but they had to do to, to make it a successfully built computer. So imagine not able to turn on computer just because the front panel power button is plugged in the other way. <laughs> anyway, with all that plugged in, let's give it a test. Okay, so I got this machine hooked up, but I haven't turned on the power yet. But I might switch to uh, HDMI too because this board does have HDMI. And yeah, reason I want I want H HDMI built onto the board is because. My monitor only supports HDMI and I, I, and I don't feel like getting a dongle for it, so... <laughs> yeah... Anyway, let me go ahead and turn on the power and hope nothing blows up. So, one, two, three. Okay, nothing exploded yet. Let's turn this machine on. Woo! Okay, let me switch the input. Hey! It's working. That's a cool little BIOS. We have a i5-3570, 4 gigs of RAM of course, and yeah. <laughs> well apparently, the language set in the BIOS is in Chinese. So I changed back to English by clicking the language and then switch to English and it's all good. So I'm gonna go ahead and save and exit. So yeah, it should reboot by itself. Alright. So I'm pretty sure that it might reboot to my SSD, but but probably not because my SSD isn't plugged in at, at the moment, so... Oh, okay. I'm gonna plug in the boot drive, so yeah, I'll be right back. 12 seconds later. Okay, SSD's plugged in. Let's... Okay, I've got to turn on the power. Pretty nice. So I'm probably gonna cable manage, so yeah. Hopefully it doesn't blue screen up. Never mind. Well, turns out I forgot to plug in the power. Whoops. 
So... Let's try it one more time. Okay, let's hope it does a blue screen. <laughs> it actually booted, what? Alright, speaking of which, here are the system properties. This is running Windows 7 Enterprise, I still have it installed. I installed it previously on that potato machine over here. And yeah, again, i5-3570, 4 gigs of RAM. Uh, I don't have internet at this moment, but yeah, I'm probably gonna install the Wi-Fi car on this in the future, so yeah. It's been like a couple of hours since I messed around with this rig, and I tested the 500 gigabyte drive earlier, but turns out it's not detecting because it's not supported because this this board only has one SATA 6 gig. Wait, 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 pause for a moment here. Turns out it was a dirty SATA connector. That's why it's not detecting. So I decided to give it a clean with hand sanitizer and give it a good wipe down. And then I'm doing some tweezers treatment on the connector. So yeah. After it's all cleaned up, it's now working perfectly fine. And I decided to try and boot Windows 10 on this 500 gig drive, but it gave me blue screen of death with bad system config info and this PC simply did not boot. I had to take out the CMOS battery, wait for a couple of while, put it back in, turn it on, and it reset the CMOS configuration, and once I hit F1, it rebooted by itself. Which is strange. <laughs> so I had to live it out for another good while and try again, again, and again, until I figure out I need to put on the ref the fresh CMOS battery down here and yeah after putting the fresh battery in here it's working perfectly fine except that it cannot do anything besides entering the BIOS once despite that I had to update the BIOS and it's now working perfectly fine again so yeah maybe because it's a sketchy power supply or a power cord that I had laying around or I don't even know not sure about that but otherwise, the PC is all built with the blue fan on here with the Cooler Master i70C. It looks fancy as heck. Then we have a 500 gig drive down here. As I'm doing here, I have a 512 megabyte USB flash drive which, which contains D-band on here. And I'm currently in the process of D-banding the 500 gigabyte drive. I already tested it earlier and it works perfectly fine only if I plug it into the SATA 6 gig. I'm currently D-banding the drive as it contains my Francis stuff and all of that sh**. It's gonna take me 3 hours to do so or probably an hour or so uh, I don't know how long but god knows when. But anyway, talking about 160GB drive, I already did test 160 gig drive earlier and it works perfectly fine and yes I did I already tested it earlier on my mom's school PC about years and years and years ago and this is pulled from the uh the LG775 board here which no longer works and it has Windows XP installed and of course it contains some risky things so no. Oh, no my goodness this drive might have contained unsay so stuff in here Unsay so. <laughs> so yeah, I might deband this soon, but yeah, currently debanding one, but yeah. Okay, so the PC is built. Let's go ahead and turn it on. But why is it out of focus? Okay. Okay. It boots really quick because it has an SSD. So let me go and type my password. Alright, we're in. And as, as you can see, I have Nightlight all set up and everything. I got most of the programs and stuff installed. And yeah, don't mind about the Discord loading here. Going. I got most of the stuff on here, including OBS, Discord, Firefox, Opera GX, Qubit Tour, and stuff like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and go on to System Properties to recap what specs I have on this machine. Core i5, 3570, 4 gigs of RAM. There are a lot of room for upgrades. Yeah, but there's something weird about this motherboard here. This monitor does not play nicely on the board with HDMI on. When I turn on Windows 8 feature with HDMI plugged in to my monitor, it just straight up gave me graphical glitch here, which is super strange. 
However, I tried on VGA using my sister's TV in her room next door, try that again, and it seems like graphical glitch issue is simply gone. It simply doesn't happen to the TV with the VGA connector on. But however, I did have two drives on here. One is an SSD and the other is Final Geek Drive, which is called Myra's Treasure for some reason. I'm probably gonna put games on here if I ever get a GPU for this thing. And I'm gonna replace the sketchy power supply soon. And of course, we don't have internet because I don't have a Wi-Fi card on this PC, as I said earlier in the previous clip. Shut up, phone. Let me go ahead and check Specky here in, in case you're curious. There you go. And CPU-Z in case you're all curious. Or G and GPU-Z as well. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's a wrong thing. There you go. That's about it for the CPU-Z and the GPU-Z. And now let's check the Crystal Disk info. And yes, both drives seems to be good at 100% on the SSD and it doesn't show the health status at percentage, what percentage is it on the hard drive for some weird reasons. And of course, it is a 7200 RPM hard drive. We're looking at the power, power on count and the hours here, it seems to be pretty long. For the SSD, it's much longer than that. Everything is good so far. So yeah, so far so good. So yeah, I'm gonna show you guys my new PC one more time, simply from used parts. New case and all that, cause it's so cheaply built. And I'm gonna show you guys the inside one more time. Looks fancy with the blue fan and all that stuff. And yes, of course I need to replace the power supply soon. Despite the sketchy power supply, I think the build is a successful, so... Yeah, I'm gonna upgrade the power supply before putting a GPU in, maybe in the next couple of weeks or so. So yeah, I have to say, buying stuff old and used is definitely worth it, but there are risks involved buying the used parts. A, there might be damages, and B, it might be some fill, but still functional, and C, there might be issues around the corner, maybe in the future. But otherwise, it's definitely worth buying because it definitely gives the old hardware at least a new life. I'm actually proud of what I've done, so yeah. 2022 custom built PC with a decade old platform. Because yeah, the new Ryzen 7000 is getting expensive. Oh god. So that's gonna be about it for a 2022 custom built PC from used parts, so yeah. Because I'm being too cheap on that. Anyway. That's gonna be about it for the custom build PC video. I would like to thank you all for watching. Be sure to like, share, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for future uploads like this. And hopefully I'll upload future videos about this PC. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Maybe in the next few months, few weeks. Who knows? Taku, signing out. Peace.